All right, guys. Johnny Nerd out here. This is a video. Hopefully, will help a lot of you guys out there. If you're out there, if you're thinking about tackling converting your own bike into an e-bike, you've made a great decision. Your life will never be the same. This is going to be the most defining moment of your life. You know, if you've had children, if you've been married, forget all that. This is going to be the new chapter in your life. I'm grateful that you chose to watch this video to get you into that new era. So I'm going to try to do soup to nuts, install, caveats. Of course, obviously, all bikes are different. No bike is the same. This one is going to be different than your bike, but they're all... 80%, 80, 80 to 90% the same if you're doing a mid-drive install. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to be installing a mid-drive. If you're new to this channel, if you don't have no idea any of my videos or anything, I am Johnny Nerd Out. I'm a professional e-bike builder, converter. I've been doing this since 2017. Probably have done about 200 of these. I get calls all the time of people saying, hey, I can't, I don't live anywhere near you. I don't live anywhere near anybody that can do this. Can you help me, guide me through? So this is for you guys. If you don't live anywhere near, or if you're like, you know, I just want to tackle it myself. Let's get into it. Feel free to ask me questions. Check out the comments below. I'm sure some people will be adding some, some tips that maybe I forgot or left out. I'm just gonna go, go through this and do it and give you my, my thoughts along the way. So let's, let's just get into it. Hopefully you've seen my other video. I have another video. Um, I'll probably put a link up here on the tools you're going to need to do this. These are like the specialty tools. You're going to need general tools. You, you know, I recommend getting like a torque wrench. You don't need it, you know, to, to do this, but it's, it's up to you. Like how perfect you want to get this install. It's totally up to you. You could, you could eyeball stuff. I know some people are like, no, it has to be to that Newton meter of torque for everything. Yes, you should. Ideally, yes, you should. But some people don't have the means to get this. So... Keep that in keep that in consideration. And you could do these in different order. I'm just doing it in this order that I see fit. Sometimes I do things in different orders. Some people like to do things in different orders. There's no right or wrong answer for most of this stuff. Some things you want to do in a certain order. But I'll just give you my kind of things. And yeah. So first thing you want to do, I take the pedal wrench. I have this on a stand right now. This one might be better to do it off of a stand because you're going to want to putting a lot of torque on this. But sometimes these are not very snug, so you don't need a lot of pressure. This one was not. This had not a lot of pressure on it. Some of these, if it's an old bike, this one I think is pretty much new. So it's probably not going to have a lot of torque on a lot of this stuff. If you have a bike that's 30 years old, it's just going to be rust filled and you're going to need to probably step on it and get in there. And this is a pedal wrench. It's just a 15 millimeter wrench, but you could see how thin that is. You could, you don't need one of these in most cases. You could just get a 15 millimeter wrench, uh, but sometimes you need a really thin profile one. And this one's nice because it's got the rubberized grip. So that's why I do this one. Drive side is lefty loosey. Non drive side is the opposite. It's righty. And this thing was like hand tight. This thing is coming off so easy. So it's going to go the same way. If you're facing the rear of it, drive side is lefty loosey, non-drive side is righty tighty to take it off. The pedals off, let's put those off to the side. Next, this usually is gonna be an eight millimeter Allen to take off your crank arms. You may have a bolt on there that's like 14 millimeters usually. Most of the time it's an eight millimeter. And these should be pretty snug, but nothing crazy. So we got that off, now this opens up. Now this is where your crank puller comes in. Get that seated in there nice and tight. Um, usually you want to get a wrench. You don't need to go crazy on it, but get that in there pretty snug. This one's got a lot of bite in it, so I don't need to go too crazy on it. I'm going to use the pedal wrench. Okay, and that just pops off. That off. Take this off. Put the old parts over here. Now I'm just gonna go and do the other side. I'm working in a bedroom here, so it's really tight. It's not ideal. I'm gonna take the crank puller, just put it on the other side. Make sure it's got a decent amount of teeth or decent amount of threads grabbing. And crank pullers are one of those things you don't want to cheap out on. That's why I pretty much I only carry the park tool. I only buy a premium crank puller. Don't cheap out. Don't get something that's 
not a name brand, get a Pedro's or something like that. Do not get a cheap Chinese knockoff of a crank puller. And I don't recommend buying one of those kits that's like 30 piece bike tool kit for 30 bucks. It's gonna come with crappy parts in it and you're gonna probably strip out your crank arm. You're gonna strip this out and it's gonna be stuck on your bike and then you're gonna have to go take it to a bike shop or use an angle grinder if you have one. Do it off, I've done that before. I made a video on it. Okay, I'm gonna leave this bike down on the ground here because I'm gonna take off the bottom bracket now. You're gonna need a bottom bracket remover tool. You can see it's splined. It's just gonna go right in there. You always wanna go towards the bike, take it off. So if you're on the drive side, you're gonna go clockwise. If you're on the non-drive side, you're gonna go counterclockwise. And that's gonna remove the, the remove this. And these should be on there pretty tight. Okay, and then this just pulls out. Same thing on the other side. So this one had a weird, ooh, had an unusual bottom bracket. You can see. Normally they'd have two cartridge, there'd be a cartridge on here. Every bike is different. Most bikes are not gonna be like this, but. Okay, so this opens up the bottom bracket shell. So here's the bottom bracket shell. Got the motor, it's the BBS HD. You can see this just slides in like so, just like so. And then one thing to be cautious about, see there's, there's a little bit of gap there and the motor is hitting the chain stay. So that's not good, you don't want that. You don't wanna tighten this in if that's, if there's a space there. You're not always gonna have a space, but just wanna take a look and see if there is a space there, which there is. So you don't wanna tighten that in, otherwise you're gonna be putting pressure on on this and all the mechanisms in there. So you want, you want that to just be slight. That's exaggerated, but you just want there to be some room in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some spacers in there. You're just bottom bracket or cassette spacers. Okay, so we're gonna put some spacers in here. I'm gonna start with two. And you wanna, yeah, that's still there. I'm gonna put one more in. One, I'm gonna put a third in. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I put in three little spacers in there, and then you can see there's just a little bit of, of a gap there, and that's what you want. And then we'll discuss chain line in a second. What are all these wires? Oh no. This goes to your motor, this goes to your battery. Some motors have a six volt out, which powers lights, which is nice because you can control it from your display. This is your speedometer pickup, and this is your gear shift sensor, and this is your main wiring harness, which is gonna run up to your display, brake cutoffs, and throttle. Now here is where I like to get everything kind of plotted out. You wanna do a dry run. We're gonna run the cables up. And see, so I'm gonna open up this one, open the bag up, get your main cable out. And then this just goes right here. Plug it in. Careful, you don't wanna bend any pins in here. So you wanna make sure these two lines are lining up and then just gently put them in. Don't wanna bend them or, you know, wanna go straight line in and it's constant steady pressure and put them in. I've bent these before, it sucks. Best, good news is though, if you make any mistake on this, just order another cable, it's not the end of the world. But try not to do it. You don't wanna to have to do that because you're excited about your new bike and you wanna get this bad boy up and running. So like what I wanna do is I'm running this cable. I like to run it underneath here, if you could see that. So I'm gonna run it there. You don't want this to get pinched by this frame, so you gotta be careful of that. So if you can see that, there's a little bit of clearance right there. You see that daylight? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to run it right through there. A little bit of pressure on the cable is okay, but you don't want it to get pinched because that's just metal in there. Those wires and cables are just metal. Metal doesn't like to be kinked or bent. Little bend, that's okay. But, you know, hard bends, no, they don't like that. Okay, so at this point, I will install the display on where it's gonna go. Sorry if I'm blocking anything. I'm doing my best here, people. It's cramped. This is the 500C display. I really like this display. It's small, it's color, it's easy to install. Wanna leave room for your throttle? So I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna put that right about there, cause then my throttle can go right there. 
snug it up a little bit. You don't need to go crazy. This isn't, it's not probably where it's gonna live, but it might. Okay, then we could run up this cable, connect it green to green. Same thing with these connectors, just line them up and put them in straight. You don't wanna bend these pins. There's a throttle. So to put the throttle on, we're gonna to to take the hand grips off and the brakes. And most of them are with a five millimeter. For the brakes at least, they're usually five mil. Just loosen that up a little bit. Hand grips, some of these have a Allen on it to keep it on there. This one does, this is a three millimeter. So now this will come off. These are nice because they're easy to remove. A lot of times they're just on by like suction. So you have to spray rubbing alcohol in there or if you have an air compressor, blow it in there or even simple green. I'll make another video on like hacks on how to remove that because if you're just starting off, if you've only done like one, if this is your first one, it could be a pain. So we are going to remove the front brake. Got this. And then we're going to want to get the cable out because we're going to replace this with a new mechanical one. So you just want to line these little barrel adjusters up so that they are... They spin independently from each other. So you want to make sure they're lined up together. I don't know if you could see that. I'll try to zoom in. But you want to get them zoomed up so they're all together. So you can see, I can see the cable from here all the way until it goes into the housing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull on it like that. And then look, it just slides out like that. And now I have this and this. Now I can take my new trusty, dusty, fancy brake cutoffs that come with a sensor in it. So take the little cap off of there. I'll get this ready to go. But first I want to put on my throttle. This has got a dropper seat post. So I'm just going to leave this. This is kind of where it becomes like a little bit more like of an art form because you got to see how do you want it to be set up and how do you want it to look? Um, and like, does this, does the throttle going to interfere with anything? So I could just dry run it like this. And yeah, it's going to hit there. That's, that's annoying. So maybe I want to put it there, which is what I want to do. Throttle's going on. Drop our seat posts. And then we're going to take our brake lever goes on last. And then we can put our hand grip on. You want to line up your brake levers so that your hands are like straight. So when your hands are on the handlebars, you're gripping your brake levers. Your wrists are straight. You don't want to have it like this because then you're putting a lot of undue strain on your on your wrists. Or like this, it's going to hurt. So you want to have it straight. So when you're riding, your hands are straight and your hands are on your brake levers. That make that makes sense? Hopefully it does. Let's pretend I'm riding. I'm just going to stand on it. And I'm going to hand, put my hands on it. Look at my wrists. I mean, about there is level. So I'm going to... Tighten that up. Okay, and then I'm just gonna feed in, I'm gonna feed this brake cable into the new brake lever, just the opposite of how I did it before. So that's in, super loose, but that's fine. We're gonna adjust it later. Now we got some more connectors here that we could tie into our main wire harness. So let's find the one that's connect. There's only one for the, it's kind of hard to get these confused because there's, it's only one option really. They're all color coded, so just go ahead and Put that in there, put the brake in here. And then what I like to do too is afterwards, I may disconnect this and reconnect them as I do my cable routing, my cable management. You want that to look as clean and nice as possible. So I'm just gonna move this stuff all over on the handlebars, get it to where I want. You wanna check that the throttle, when you hit the throttle, it doesn't hit anything because this one's got a dropper seat post lever on it. You don't want it to hit that. So that's good right there. I'm going to tighten this bad boy down. Throttles you don't want to tighten down very hard. Five Newton meters is what it calls for. Okay, so this left side is pretty much done. Now we've got the right side here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Sometimes if yours has an all-in-one brake shit, brake and shifting mechanism, like this will all be one unit. You don't need to replace this. You just put an inline brake cutoff sensor right in here. And then you don't have to replace it. This one doesn't, they're separate, so it's nice. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to remove this with a three millimeter here. I'm going to remove this with a five millimeter. And I'm going to replace this with the one that it, with a cutoff. Got the brake lever loose. I'm going to just again line this up so I can see the whole thing. 
pull this. Oh, this one won't go. Sometimes this happens. You can't pull it all the way through. Okay, so you gotta loosen up your rear. So you just gotta find your rear cable. Take a five millimeter, loosen that up. Now this thing should, this thing should come out easy. Look at that. So that's what you want. You want these to be lined up and lined up with this. So there's a part here, part here. You want it to line up with this. So now look at that, just pops right out. And then this just pops out and now you're done. Let's see if I could do it again one-handed, putting it back in, put, installing the new one. Okay, so we got the new one here. So I got this, open it up. And you can see just like that. Just gonna make it sit. Just like that. And then you want these to line up. Just like that. Come on, get in there. Okay, so you want it to line up just like that. And then that just pops in. And then you're gonna tighten this up. I like to loosen this, the bottom one up and then tighten everything together. So now it's gonna look like that. So that cable's not gonna pop out and this is tight. All right, so you want all this to be tight. This is for adjusting on the fly. So you want this to be tight when you first start off. You wanna do all your adjusting back there. Same with shifting. Now that we got this tight, we'll just put this on the handlebar like so. Tighten that down to get our, our angle aligned. See, that's kind of wanted to be just like that. So then I'll just find that and tighten it down. Let's put on the hand grip. So I know where it's going. And I'm just moving the shifter back over. I just pushed everything all the way up against that hand grip. So now that's pretty much good. Now I can plug this in and I want to kind of wire this so that it runs along with some other wire. So I'm gonna zip tie all these wires together. I'm gonna to try to use the existing cables that are on the bike so it looks clean. So that's all plugged in. Got my throttle, two brake cutoffs, and display. It's all in there. So now we kind of know the length that we need to play with. I like to keep this pretty tight. I don't wanna have excess cabling up here. I want it to all be down underneath the motor. So I'm gonna find, okay, that's about the tightness we want. I'm just gonna run it and then I'm gonna make sure I'm just gonna pull all the excess cabling out through the bottom of the motor. And this is totally personal preference. You may wanna have your bundle up there. Maybe you want this, you know, you want this free. You don't want the excess cabling under there. It's totally up to you. If you do a lot of off-roading, maybe that's important to you. Like, I want nothing that could get snagged on here. I would rather have a rat's nest up here than down here. Totally personal preference. It's your e-bike, it's your custom e-bike. Make it however you want it. This is just how I like to do it. So now that I got that pretty tight and it's right under there, cool, I like that. Now we can mount the battery. So I'm gonna use these two holes here. So I'm gonna take this off. Before I lock in this motor, I like to have all the cables ran through, ran through it. And this bike is a little unusual too because you can see it's got the cable stays are up here. It's not ideal for an e-bike conversion. You like to have them on the underside because then you could hide the cables. I don't know why they ran them up here, but that's what they did. So we got our battery. Mount the battery to the frame. So we're gonna go into our bag, find our key. We're gonna unlock the battery from the plate. We just need the plate for right now. I like to set this up. I like to just dry fit it. I want it to be as low as possible. I want to have it as low as possible. You don't want to have it up here. You want to have as low gravity as possible. I got a couple things I'm dealing with here, so I'm probably only going to be able to go about this low. Okay, I got those lined up. I'm going to take my three millimeter, tighten these down. I'm not going to go crazy tight because I want to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to get them a little snug. And I always like to make sure the battery's off when I'm doing this stuff. Okay, so let's just see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can go down a little bit lower, but if not, I'm not worried. Okay, and actually this one, these cables are making this battery not sit perfectly flush. So it's causing it to like go up. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move these cables so I get a nice clean looking bike. So I'm just going to move these off to the side a little bit. There we go. Batteries on. That's good with me. So now we got this cable. I'm just going to connect these. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. We've got our battery cable here. I just want to be mindful of these other cables. So I'm going to feed this down. And I want to feed it underneath here. And so then you just want to make sure you want this motor pivoted all the way forward. But you want to make sure it's not pinching any of these two cables, these electrical cables that I just put there. That looks good. You want to make sure that they're kind of flowing kind of freely. And there's no noticeable pinches. It's okay if they're making contact. You just don't want them getting pinched. You take your lock ring kit. One side has got grooves on it that are external. One's got grooves that go inside. We want the external grooves to go against our, our bike. We want those to bite into our, our frame. So I'm going to just put that on here like so. And then you can see there's a gap here. We're gonna to wanna to put spacers in there. We don't wanna leave that like that. Otherwise this is just gonna get bent and it's not gonna really bite as well as it can. So I'm going to use, sometimes Bafang gives you these longer screws with it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're benevolent and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they give you these spacers, sometimes they don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these spacers in. And I like to do it outside of the bike. It's a little bit easier. Put it upside down, put the spacers on it. This is where I wish I had a whole camera crew. Okay, so you can see. Uh, and those are five millimeters. I like to tighten down these little, the two black bolts first. Just get them a little bit. That's probably too much because I'm going to need something to grip onto that one. I need, I need to bite onto that. I'm going to loosen those up just a little bit. All right, hopefully you guys can see a little bit better of what I'm doing here now. So I got these two bolts in first. Take that off. Now we could put on our main lock ring, which goes on there. Put a little bit of thread lock, a little bit of Loctite on here. It just keeps it from vibrating. You don't have to do this, but just one of those things. It makes it a little bit nicer. So you want to find, should be a little direction. Sometimes these are hard to read, but there's a directional on here. And you want to go 50 to 60 Newton meters. Honestly, I've never heard of anybody over tightening these things. So tighten it is much as you can and you could either use this premium install tool or there's a universal uh lock ring tool it, it uses for the outside and the inside this one is a little bit more convenient if you're only going to do like one or two this one's fine and then you could use you could use this and a rubber mallet just go ahead and get it like that and just keep pressure on it and just, you know, smack it. You want to get this thing on there real tight. Okay, this should be on there nice and secure. Um, if you're using this, I recommend using a rubber mallet, getting it here, and then just really, like, getting it on there tight. Like I said, you really can't over-tighten these things. And then same thing, this outer lock ring goes on. Use the other side to just tighten it down. Now we've got this whole thing under here. Looking nice and gross. So we're gonna try to just, let's get these wires. Connect the battery, make sure the battery's off and then just connect those two. Now we're gonna connect the speedometer pickup. Go into your bag. This is your speedometer pickup. I don't know if you see that. Just plugs into here and then tighten that down. And then you're gonna run this. Here's a little this is what it goes into. This sticks to the inside of the chain stay here. I'll take a little picture here. Okay, so we got this situated like this. You want to put this little magnet in. Be careful because there are three 
screws in there. Set this black one aside. Do not lose it, it is tiny. Now you're gonna find a spoke. I like to find the one that comes out closest to me and just this little magnetic pickup sits in there, sits on the spoke and then this screws on. And then you're gonna need your T20 Torx with a security bit. Just tighten that up and you wanna spin it so it's facing the non-drive side and then just kind of tighten it down. And now this is, you want to put this up here. You don't want to put this too close to the rim. I like to put it in like maybe right about here. I'll tell you why in a second. Cause this has to sit here and I like to be able to run this cable along here. And I like to find a cable that I could run it along so it doesn't scrape the tire or anything. And this is perfect. There's a tire, there's a wire here. So I'm just gonna zip tie it all along here so that it sits along here. If you could ever find a, an existing cable or wire that's already on the bike, try to use that and zip tie it to it. Cause then it keeps it looking clean. Now I wanna find out, I'm gonna rotate the tire to see how far away it is when this is zip tied on. This has got a sticky tape. It's just, you peel this off and it just kind of sticks just a little bit, just so you can work with it. And you want that to be pretty close. I want that to be a little bit closer. So I am going to adjust this. You can see that comes out. I can pull that all the way out. I just want it to come out a little bit right there. Now I'm gonna put that screw right in there and that's gonna hold it right where I want it. So get that screw you got that you kept in a safe place. You're gonna put it in there, tighten it down with a number two Phillips. Tighten it until it stops moving. Now get two zip ties. I like to feed them through here, get them ready. And then I peel off this adhesive backing. And that should be able to hold it while you work with it, hopefully. And then when you stick it, you can kind of see, yeah, it still is about a centimeter away. That'll work. All right, zip tie it. I like to try to hide where the zip tie meets. Just kind of hide it underneath. You don't want to see, you don't want to see it. As much things that you could hide, the better. It'll just make it look a little bit cleaner. And every bike is different. Some things you're going to be able, be able to make it look super clean. Some of them, there's just, you do the best you can. Okay, so that's on there. Take your wire cutter, snip off this close. You want to get a clean flush cut wire cutter so it could get right up in there. Okay, and so now we've got all this excess cable. I'm going to try to run it along here. I'm going to cut that, get rid of that one. Get a bunch of zip ties. I use so many zip ties in this part when I'm doing my cable management. Oh man, I go through so many. I do, I'll zip tie something and I'll decide, ah, I don't like the way that looks. Undo them all, try another way. Okay, I like that way. And then you just gotta go through and just add a whole bunch of zip ties. The more you add, the cleaner it looks. Like if I add a bunch of here, it'll keep those wires real tight together. And I like to just zip tie it. You don't want any of these wires to be moving, so I just zip tie it. Okay, you want all the wires to be stationary, not moving. Um, okay, so that's good. We got that, we got that. I'm not gonna install the gear shift sensor on this one. Check out another video if you wanna see how to do that. I'll put up a video on just how to install the gear shift sensor. And then from here, I like to make sure, let's go do some cable management up here. Same thing, it's just, it's an art. Just do your own, make it look nice. See there's existing cables here. So I'm just gonna zip tie it all to here. Make that look all nice. You're gonna have to undo some cables and redo cables because you're gonna find that, oh yeah, this one's running kind of wonky. I'm gonna need a little bit more slack. Good, and you know, turn your handlebars. Make sure that you got enough slack so when you're turning, you're not ripping stuff out. Okay, and then from here on out is just zip tying. Zip tying. It does help if you sing songs while you do this or have music playing. If you don't have, you know, if you can't afford a radio, just sing to yourself. And I'm just doing a bunch of zip ties. And then just from here, yeah, up here, I like to take the throttle cable, brake shift sensor cable. Like right now, that looks gross. I don't know if you can see how gross that is. I don't know if I have HD on the grossness. But just bunch them together, zip tie it. 
and just invest in zip ties and then just follow them down. Just look how much cleaner that's looking already. And I'll do the same thing over here. This is one of the one things where you see a lot of amateur bikes, people who made the bikes themselves. Cable management is just out of control. And it's like, just spend five minutes. Zip tie it all, make it look nice, and it'll look like you paid somebody to do it. Plus, if we're, if we're a group of DIYers, we, wanna, we want our bikes to look good so that people are like, oh, I wanna do that, instead of buying all those crappy pre-made bikes. Because with this bike, with this custom bike, this is a way better bike than what you could buy on a, in the store. Even if you wanna buy like a $8,000 Specialized. Spec-wise, this bike is way better. This is like almost a thousand watt hour battery. This is a thousand watt motor. At peak, this is putting out like 1700 watts. Performance wise, this is way better than any bike that you can buy that's street legal. And this, depending on your you know legality, this may or may not be legal in where you live. So be mindful of that. If you're trying to be legal, you know, unless you live on like BLM land or you're taking it strictly off-road OHV places, this, this motor may not be legal to where you live. So just be mindful of that. But even a 750 watt motor, which is pretty much legal everywhere, you know, except for maybe like some national parks or something like that, you're gonna get a way better bike for way less money. This, this bike probably costs a quarter of like a Specialized. And I know this bike is nothing like a Specialized bike, but if you got a Specialized bike frame to start with and then decked it out with this through $1,500 of battery and motor and all like, you know, the mechanical accessories, you would have a way better bike than what they're selling for like seven, $8,000, if not more. But if that's what you want, if you want that aesthetic look, like, yeah, that's, that's what you're paying for. But I'm just a huge fan of DIY. I feel like this was, you know, 20 years ago when people were building their own PCs because it was half the price and you get a way better performing PC than buying one at Office Max. This is what this is like. This is the same reincarnation of that. Building your own is way better and way cheaper than going and buying one that's pre-made. From here on out, you just gotta put your crank arms on and they're labeled R. If you're, looking, if you're sitting on the bike, it goes on the R, that's the drive side. You wanna put your chain ring on first. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this bike around. And you know, obviously you wanna cut you want to cut all of these off because that looks gross. And when you are done with, with all this, I like to take just spiral cable wrap and go through and, and do that. It just makes it look one more step nicer. It just looks like it's cohesive. Okay, and now we're gonna put on chain ring. And you can see I did most of this install without using that bike stand. You don't totally need one. If your bike has a kickstand, you might be just fine. This is not ideal. Usually I work in the shop and I'm doing this, but it was too cramped and I needed to have better lighting and all that. So, so then you want to find your chain ring. And depending on which one you want, you can go with a Lecky. Um, check out my video on chain rings, you know, to find out what you need. If you're having chain line issue if your chain line is too far away too out of the box away from the bike you might need a lucky to offset that and then you're going to take you can see it for this hd there are five holes let's go ahead and find them line them up and then and then take your four millimeter okay we got that on i could put the chain back on and a good way to size your chain, if you're putting a new chain ring on, which you probably are, you're gonna wanna resize your chain. You may actually need to replace your chain um, if it's not the right size. And if it's old and gross, it might be a good time to just replace your chain anyways. Now that you're adding a motor onto this, you wanna have a good working chain. Um, but you wanna be able to go into the, your tallest gear, your lowest gear, your biggest gear, however you wanna call it. You wanna be able to go into that and just have this thing be pretty tight you just want to have it a little bit of play you don't want it to be so tight that it's like grinding and you're not able to do anything but you also don't want it to be like this it's not in the biggest gear right now so it's fine let's see if we can get it into the biggest gear let's put some crank arms on here so let's find r here's r so we're going to put that on there 
And then we're gonna go into our bag of hardware, find these. You could also reuse your old ones if you want. And then we are going to use uh, eight millimeter. You don't have to use like a high end eight millimeter for this one. I do recommend getting something with leverage though. This is the one I sometimes use for little things. You can see, you're not gonna get leverage on this. This is just, you're not getting leverage that way. So if you could find something that has leverage, it's gonna make your life easier. You wanna torque this down pretty good. Put our pedals back on, pedal wrench. Okay, you can see I'm in the second to the lowest gear. This thing is stretched out. I need to add, I need to add more. This stock chain is not gonna cut it, so I need to replace this chain. And then just to talk about chain line a little bit more, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but you want this to be as straight as possible with that. So if I put a different chain, chain ring on here, it would probably be, the teeth would be to about here, which would move everything over, which is gonna cause this to jump off a lot. It's gonna cause shifting issues, especially the chain staying on in your lowest gears. And adding a Lecky uh, chain ring has that small, has a, uh, a unique tooth profile. They're big and then little, which fit into the grooves of this chain. So it grips onto it really well. Um, so if you're ever having chain issues with it like falling off or not grip, this, just get one of those and it might take care of all your problems. Um, they're really good at just like having sticky hands on something and it just grips onto it. Not to mention the benefits of changing your chain line, which if you're having that problem, this might also take care of it. Depending on which one you get, you wanna get, I think the 42 and the 46 have a good offset that go in. But if you get like a 28, something like that, it's not gonna move in. So lastly, I am going to show you how to just bundle up your bulge down there. What I like to do is just kind of see how everything is, get them all organized and kind of pull them out. So I kind of got it like this. See, it looks kind of nice like that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some zip ties around there. Now I'm not gonna go crazy with this. I'm just gonna throw like one or two. Okay, so now it's gonna kind of hold it like that. I'm gonna just kind of, you wanna get it folded up. You're gonna wanna play with it See how many times you can fold it. It's kind of like origami. Fold it so that it gets up. You don't want to pinch any cables. So you gotta be, you gotta like be mindful of the cables and then the connections. So maybe something like that, and then I might, yeah. So if I zip tie it like this, zip tie it like that. I could twist it. I could kind of bend it up a little bit, push it up against here. And I could zip tie this. I could find something around here, points to anchor it. This is different for every bike. Sometimes they just naturally fold up and they'll just sit nicely, just naturally. You don't have to do anything. Some of them you really gotta work at and kind of get it up there. So that's, depending on your bike, I don't have the greatest advice for that one. Just, just do what looks nice. You just don't want it to be loose. You don't want it to be rub it against the tire. You don't want it to hang down too low because that's going to snag on things. So just, and just zip tie a bunch. You want to get all loose cables tight. So just zip tie everything down there. And then, yeah, when you're done, done, you think you're done, just go through, like I'll clean this up again. That's pretty much the entire install. The rest is just kind of fine tuning your bike. You know, you want to make sure that it's shifting right now after you do this. Um, I'm not gonna go into gear shifting on this. Check out another video for that. Adjusting your brakes, same thing. But other than that, this thing is pretty much ready to roll. You got everything connected. You got it looking nice. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And if you need help, you need links to stuff, I got all the tools, check out my website. Um, I have an all you can order toolkit. I'll probably have different trim levels if you wanna just get the basic one, like you just wanna get it done or if you want to get it done and done 
you know, with no hassles. You want to get all the premium tools and you want to have these. I'll have that listed there as well. Cool. And check out the comments below. I'm sure some of you guys are going to have some tips and tricks that I left out or, you know, for specific bikes that may help you. So, all right. Thanks in advance, guys. See you later.